What you guys got another video here for you on how to fix 100% disk usage in Windows. Now, there's quite a few reasons why this can happen, and we're going to go through some of the tips that you can try to try to fix 100% disk usage. So if you're seeing something looking like this on your task manager and it says 100% disk usage, I'm going to show you some of the things to look for to help diagnose and troubleshoot this issue so you can fix it and stop it happening. Now, there's quite a few reasons why this happened. The first thing to check is make sure the drive is fully functional. You can check the smart readout with Crystal Disk Info. This will tell you whether the drive is failing. This software is free to download, and you can see here it will tell me the health status of the drive. It will tell me whether the drive is in good health, the temperature of the drive, and it will also tell me uh, other information, whether there's any critical warnings, or any other major concerns with that drive, it will be listed here in the smart readout of that drive. Now, if you're using an SSD or a mechanical drive, mechanical drives has sectors on them. And if any of those have bad sectors, you want to really start thinking about replacing that drive. And sometimes having a bad drive can cause a lot of problems with the computer, and these can go undetected. And this is probably one of the most common uh, things that people forget to do is check their drive to make sure it's in full working order. You can also check the total host reads and writes of that drive and also the power on count uh, and the power on hours of that drive as well. It's important that you check all this to make sure the drive is in full working order and it's not uh, coming to the end of its life. Now, if you know the brand of your drive, you can also download software from the manufacturer's website, whether it be Western Digital, whether it be Samsung or any other known branded type of drive, you can download the software and check the smart from there and also run some diagnostics on there with their software. If it's one of those cheaper branded uh, types of drives from China, you're probably not going to have any software that you can download and use to check that drive. You can use command prompt and do check disk on that drive to see whether there's any issues with that drive as well. If uh, that is a unknown uh, branded drive and you don't have software available to you, but here we do have software. Now try to steer clear of those cheap type of drives that you can buy for real cheap money. These are not very good and they also are not going to have any sort of guarantee and warranty on them. And trying to get your money back from those is going to be very difficult if the drive fails. But something like Western Digital, a tried and trusted or Samsung or a well-known branded drive, you best to go with something like that. You can check the firmware, make sure you've got the latest firmware in case there's a known issue with that particular firmware that you're running it may cause issues running a update of your firmware on that drive will obviously uh, make that drive fully updated and functional the way it should be maybe the drive is getting too hot and the drive is starting to overheat and this can cause the drive to slow down as well so check the temperatures of that drive and this software and also the one previously will tell you the temperature of the drive to tell you uh, whether there's anything going wrong with that drive Another thing to do is make sure you're not using the full capacity of that drive all the time because when you're transferring files and to and from that drive, it can cause the drive to have issues because it might not have enough storage to be able to transfer those files across. You can run a short diagnostic or a long diagnostic check on that drive. I would tend to do a long diagnostic check, start off with a short one, see whether it comes back with any issues. If it does, then you know the drive is starting to fail and it's time to think about replacing that drive. Now, I also have a four terabyte crucial drive in here, but it's not recognized by that software. Another thing to do is open up task manager here and check for processes and check what process it is using all of your system resources. You can also go up to the three dots under performance here and click on resource monitor. Uh, this will basically allow you to weed out and find what uh, type of process is running and using all your system resources and slowing down your system. So inside here, you will see there is a tab called disk. You want to go to the disk tab and then you want to look here for the read and writes and what is using all of that system resources. You can see here, it gives me all the information, whether it be some sort of process in the background, Windows updates, whether it be a system file, you can filter these by using the filter keys here and you can filter out whether it be registry system or whether it be a browser that is using some sort of system resources as well. So check all inside here. This is a really 
good little utility that is built into Windows, which will help you find what is hogging all of your system resources inside here. Now, once you've found what is using your system resource, you can actually check the path of where that file was located and go there and either uninstall that program or remove it or put it to sleep with another program like Process Explorer or something like that. Now, once you've found it here, you can see it will give you the full name of the file, which could be running and using all your resources. And this is how you can troubleshoot and find that file and weed it out and uh, get rid of it. Next up, we're going to go to the run bar here by right clicking and going run and type sysdm.cpl. Open this up. And this is a common area as well where people will go into the advanced tab and then go into performance, which is your settings in performance here. And they will start to make changes to the virtual memory settings because they've read online somewhere that you should turn off virtual memory and have no paging file, this can cause a major problem as well. It's always best to leave this as automatically managed paging file uh, size for all drives. And this will be run by uh, Windows itself. And it does a pretty good job at doing that for you. Where a lot of people will fall into problems is if they will turn this off and they've read on there to put no paging file. And this can also have a corrupt paging file. To solve that issue, what you can do is put no paging file here and set it and then reboot the PC and then come back in and then basically put the check mark back into automatically manage paging file size for all drives. And this will give you a brand new clean paging file on your system. And that way, if you had a corrupt paging file, this can cause excessive use of the hard drive and cause it an issue. Whether it be an SSD or a hard drive, mainly mechanical drives were really problematic with this issue but SSDs are probably not as bad and you probably don't have to worry about that bit as much, but it's always best to try and see whether that rectifies the problem. Another option you can try is the indexing options here inside search. This is also known to cause high CPU usage and also high hard drive usage when there's some sort of issue with it. So what you can do is the troubleshooting area here in the advanced options, and this will delete and rebuild the index on here as well and basically this can cause a lot of problems if you have some sort of corruption inside here so rebuilding this will also uh, re-index all of the files and solve that problem so if you are having issues and it's related to the search index then this is how you can resolve that issue and you would see that inside the resource monitor it will show up and it will show you that it's to do with this index in here so this is how you can troubleshoot and find what is causing the problem on your computer. So let's move on to something else here and close that off and we'll go to the next thing you can try here. And that is going into your settings and you wanna delete all of your temporary internet files. You wanna go into storage here. You can use storage sensor if you want to. And sometimes having rogue files left inside your temporary files and things like that can cause issues and it can cause an issue where it's using a lot of the hard drive or even the CPU, and this can be a known issue, especially if it's some sort of uh, adware or something like that that's managed to get uh, downloaded and put into that area, it can cause a bit of an issue. So you definitely wanna be removing uh, all of those uh, from there as well. So just run uh, the storage sense here and clean up uh, all of the files by running storage sense. I'm not gonna run it on this system because it's a brand new fresh install but basically that's what you need to do here. If you don't want to use storage sense for whatever reason, and maybe you've disabled it because of telemetry uh, reasons, then you can use the built-in uh, cleanup tool, which has always been inside Windows. It's similar to uh, storage sense. This is basically what it's using anyway. This is just the fancy GUI interface version, but you can open it up by going into search here and type in uh, clean, and you'll see this cleanup utility right here. This has been in Windows for many, many years, and you can run the cleanup system files and run up your temporary internet files here and clean them up, and it will basically clean all of this area. If you don't want to still use this program, you can use something more advanced like Bleachbit or one of your other types of programs that you might want to use. But this is the one I would generally go for, and you can check mark some of the areas that you want to clean on that system, whether it be your browsing history, whether it'll be uh, Discord or whether it'll be some other 
uh, uh, system files that you want to clean up here or even the free space you can clean all that with these particular types of files which can also remove a lot of the temporary junk files that are left behind on your computer and some of these could have adware in them if you've been going to some sort of unsavory sites that likes to drop files in those locations and they can run in the background and cause a bit of an issue for you. So let's move on uh, to the next step, which you can do here is check to make sure all of your software is fully updated and you can use whatever method you like here, but patch my PC update will tell you whether you've got outdated programs. Having an outdated program could have a well-known bug in that program because it's outdated or it might not be supported anymore. And this could be causing the high, uh, you know, hard disk usage in the background because the program is outdated and it may have some sort of issue with it. So always check to see if all your software is updated and you can use this program for free. They do have a free version here and download it and basically run this on your system and it will light up in red here and this will tell you which ones are outdated. You can leave the check mark in them and basically perform free updates on this particular system. Click this and it will update the software and download new ones and install them on the system. Now, once you've taken care of all your programs, it's important that you take care of all your drivers and you can do that and check the system information on Windows to get your uh, motherboard manufacturer's name. And what you want to do is head over to the motherboard manufacturer's website and download the latest drivers. You can see here, I've just searched for that particular term here, gone to the website and go to the support page here, right here. And once you go here, Go to the download section here for drivers and you'll see it right here. Choose your operating system here, drivers and tools on this occasion. And it's Windows 11 64 bit for me. And you can go here and download all of the latest LAN, wireless and also chipset drivers. You've got your Bluetooth drivers, audio drivers and things like that, which you can download here. Now you can check the version here and the date and it will tell you basically these are the latest drivers for that motherboard. And once you download and install these on the system, it's possible that you could have a rogue uh, driver which is old and it might have a known issue to it and it's causing a bit of an issue on your system. So updating all of these and keeping them fully updated will make sure that that is not an issue. Also check the BIOS version of your motherboard to make sure you're running the latest BIOS, especially if it was a brand new board when it was first released. It might be a known issue to that board and it's causing that problem. Flashing a BIOS will make that problem go away. Checking device manager for what driver versions is useful. You can go in here and go to driver and it will tell you what version you're running. And you can cross reference this with the website that you went to to make sure that you're running the very latest drivers on your system. Let's go to settings here and go Windows updates. Make sure you are running all of the latest Windows updates on your computer. Also, you can uh, check Microsoft's website for known issues. Sometimes there might be an update that has come down on your system and it can cause a major problem, just like the time when we rolled an update out and basically it was causing the disk defragmenter uh, on Windows to run on an SSD, which was causing a major problem. You can have known issues. You can check these file names here and then head over to the Microsoft website for known issues. You can see here, we can check for all of the latest Windows updates and known issues for Windows 10 and Windows 11. If you're using a very old version of Windows uh, 10 or Windows 11 and it's now end of life, you need to make sure you update that system because that could be the cause of your problem as well because you're not receiving updates for that latest version. So you can always check here and look at the summary for known issues and it may well tell you that that update was causing a particular type of problem and uh, it will be listed right here. So always check Microsoft's website for known issues and if you find there is an issue, you can always go back into your Windows updates, go to Windows update history here and you'll be able to see uninstall updates and you can choose which offending file is causing the issue and basically uninstall it and you can even hide it from uh, Microsoft to stop it downloading again until they resolve that problem. Also make sure there's no updates or any sort of issues where you're sending files to your Google Drive or OneDrive or some sort of update or syncing program that is running in the background and doing tasks when you're using your computer 
because that will obviously eat up resources and eat up your hard drive resources as well, especially if you're transferring large files. Maybe it's doing some sort of backup in the in the background. You can check that inside Resource Monitor and it will tell you uh, that is causing the issue. Another thing is rogue services running in the background that are causing problems. This is known uh, on Windows. You can always come in here and find these. Sysmain is another culprit of this. You can always stop this service like so, and then you can put that to disabled. This is pretty common for older systems that are running, trying to run Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. Uh, this can cause a bit of an issue for some reason. I don't know why, but I don't have any issues with it myself. So if you're not having an issue, then uh, you can leave this alone. But if you want to turn it off, you can do. Hyper-V is also another culprit, which can cause a lot of problems in the background. And you've got file history service as well. If you are doing some sort of update in the background or it's doing some sort of um, a backing up of your files, you can always see it here. And there's some other ones in here like telemetry based stuff that you can turn off that you don't need as well. If that is causing an issue, you can turn these off right here and just click stop. Just make sure you know what you're doing here before you start turning services off. Otherwise, things won't work properly. But these are safe to turn off here. So that's the services area. Now, another thing you definitely want to check is to make sure that you don't have any sort of malware or adware or some sort of uh, nasty stuff running in the background on your computer. You can use whatever software you like to run a scan on your PC. And I've got ESET on this system here. You can run a scan with this and it will do a full in-depth scan. I would do a full custom scan of your C drive to make sure you don't have any sort of uh, nasty stuff running in the background. This is a common problem where people get adware and it will start to slow down the system a little bit and it can cause a problem. So this will also be detected inside System Resources or Process Explorer or any of those programs that you can use to try to weed out these sorts of things that are running in the background or taking up a lot of system resources on your system. Anyway, I hope this video has been some sort of use to you. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Let me know in the comments section below whether this has been useful or if you like this sort of content, I'll be happy to read your comments and I shall catch you in the very next video. Thanks for all my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support. Catch you in the next one. Bye for now.